Today we are talking about network centric warfare and we are starting right now. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Well, network centric warfare is not a thing, it is a doctrine, it is an idea. It is a concept that has been developed in the late 90s in the United States by the Department of Defense. It is about of gaining all the advantage possible from the information superiority. That is, applying the information to the domain of the military operations to have an improvement of the effectiveness of the military operation and the application of force. This information superiority, it is to be achieved by information technology and by networking computers together in a way that can exchange this information. This is pretty much intuitive, it makes sense in theory, but in practice what does it mean? For example, during Operation Desert Storm in 1991, the military commanders on the ground had to rely on maps, faxes, and vocal communications to have uh, a picture of the operations. It was calculated that the central command of the coalition in Riyadh was between 24 and 36 hours behind the ground operations. And this was considered normal was considered accepted because the time that was required by people to collect information, put together the reports, and send them manually or by fax or by any other mean to the headquarter was, well, pretty much that. If the information has to travel from the squad or platoon commander to the commander-in-chief, well, it was supposed that it was going to take about a day. Today, the United States Army and not just the United States, or have systems such that the operational situation is displayed on a screen, on a computer screen, at the headquarter, and the position of their own troops, their activity, their level of efficiency, and so on, is pretty much relayed in real time. How is this achieved? It is achieved by connecting low-level commands uh, with the rest of the commanding structure by computer networks. One of the concepts that uh, von Clausewitz, let's say the founder of modern warfare, uh, introduced was the fog of war. The commander sees what he can see with his own eyes, uh, hears what he can see with his own, his own ears, then it's just have to relay on written messages. This was the Napoleonic time, but this hasn't changed much till uh, after the Second World War. It is only with the introduction of network-centric warfare that the so-called fog of war has been dissipated because the information travel seamlessly. And mind, this is not just the US. Army, pretty much all the NATO countries have their own system that obviously are often incompatible. So one of the complaints that the commanders have is the fact that they need to have different applications to follow different parts of the forces under their command. Obviously this is not just the army, the navies have been at the vanguard of this process even much earlier before the concept was even thought about. Link 11 and then Link 16 are of naval derivation and they are um, protocols of communication that allow the uh, ships to share this kind of information. In the Air Force, network enabled platforms actually can get data from other assets and can share their data with other assets. The F-22 and the F-35, for example, really excel. Actually, it may be worth talking once again about the F-35. It's an excellent plane, I, we already talked about it. But there is something that really sets it apart from 
other aircrafts. And that this is the reason why pretty much everybody who has flown an F-35 and all the Air Forces are so hyped about. The level of sharing of the information between F-35 and other assets is um, so integrated, so high, that the so-called situation awareness of the pilots is incredibly enhanced. So in the 50s, 60s, 70s, the pilots used to see what basically the radar could actually see. In the 60s and 70s, with the introduction of the first data links, uh, the, you know, on some planes, like the F-14, for example, the pilot could receive some uh, information automatically from other uh, different platforms. This level of integration has grown. We start sharing with the, for example, the position of the targets that are actually required for the pilot to know about. Then with the advancement of technology, you can start sharing, for example, a larger picture of the battle space. You can start sharing, for example, the position of friendly planes and the position of the enemy. You can start sharing the targeting information between the platform. So one platform can target uh, a target, and the other platform can shoot at the same target without having a fix on it. And with the F-35, basically, you get a vision from above of the whole airspace. In the sense, all the sensors of all the planes, of all the F-35s in flight are automatically network and they are networked with other platforms that have a more limited uh, network centric capacity and all this information is presenting as a view from above to the pilot so it is no longer what they can see through their radar no longer what they can see through their sensors but it is a picture similar to what you get when you play a video game this was considered the holy grail of information awareness and that's the reason why pilots are so excited about it. probably the f-35 is the first top of the line uh, aircraft that comes with this capability, I am sure that we will see this on other platforms quite soon. Actually, there are rumors that the Rafale had something very similar a few years ago. But this was just the primer to make clear what we are talking about when we mention network-centric warfare in our videos. We could go in more detail about this, and if you're interested, please just let me know in the comments below. For the moment being, thank you for watching. Goodbye.